Well, look who's back. Our favorite uh, internet sovereign citizen pseudo lawyer, Mark Stevens. Got a couple new things to say. First off uh, will be his disclaimer that he puts in here. And of course he has to put that disclaimer in is because the Arizona Bar Association told him he better stop uh, giving out legal advice on the YouTube or they would uh, continue with a complaint against him. So he agreed and they dropped the complaint. But he's back with his same old bullshit. He's got his No Evidence of Jurisdiction, the name of his new video. So let's see. And uh, we'll point out his new stuff that he's got going. Jurisdiction. And remember, this is just how I did it. Not making any suggestion to someone just watching this on its own on YouTube, just go in and do something like this. So what is jurisdiction? Well, jurisdiction is the power to act, the power and authority to act, to hear a case, a particular type of case. So you got three different types of jurisdiction, and the courts have to have, uh, generally you have to have the two. You have to have subject matter jurisdiction, and you have to have personal jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction just means that they can hear by law and jurisdiction of course is only given by law. Generally what you have is the Constitution and then uh, jurisdiction is also given by through the legislature through statute. Whoa now that's new. What did I just hear? Maybe I better listen to it. Let's listen to it again and see exactly what he says. Law and jurisdiction, of course, is only given by law. Generally, what you have is the Constitution, and then uh, jurisdiction is also given by through the legislature through statute. Okay, I hope Stevens heard the words coming out of his mouth. I did, and I hope you did. And I hope all the dumbasses that comment on my videos about where's jurisdiction? What's the evidence of jurisdiction? Well, Mark Stevens just told you where jurisdiction comes from. The legislature passes a law, passes a statute of granting jurisdiction. So, according to Mark Stevens and according to reality, is jurisdiction comes through the legislature by way of a statute. So, all you Stevens acolytes out there, listen one more time. Law and jurisdiction, of course, is only given by law. Generally, what you have is the Constitution, and then uh, jurisdiction is also given by through the legislature through statute. All right, so you want evidence of jurisdiction? Mark Stevens just told you what it is. Evidence of jurisdiction is that law, is that statute that the legislature passed creating jurisdiction. So, when one of Mark Stevens' little acolytes get into court and go, well, where's evidence of jurisdiction? And the judge will say, well, did you get a copy of the citation? Uh, yeah. Well, it's, on the, uh, it's established on the citation. Well, could you point to it where it says jurisdiction? Well, no. It doesn't say jurisdiction. Like Stevens just said, jurisdiction gets to the court by way of a statute passed by the legislature. So uh, a judge will look at the citation and say, okay, let's see, uh, this, it was issued over here on uh, Main Street. Well, Main Street's my territory, so I can, uh, I'm okay there. And Joe Blow, he's the one accused of violating the uh, statute, and he was on Main Street, and that's my jurisdiction, so I've got... Uh, personal jurisdiction over him, and it's a traffic court, and the law the legislature passed gives me subject matter jurisdiction to hear traffic cases. So I've got subject matter jurisdiction, I've got personal jurisdiction, and I've got territorial jurisdiction. So jurisdiction has been established by what is on the uh, citation. Real simple, isn't it? And that's it. So the Constitution and statute will give the court, like what used to be here, the, the Gilbert Justice Court, to hear, let's say, traffic courts, or they can hear small claims up to a certain dollar amount. That's what they're able to do. That's subject matter. They have to have uh, over that particular type of case. Now, the police officer and 
through the prosecutor is making a legal claim that their law applies to me and gives them personal jurisdiction. That's correct. And how does that work? You said they're making a legal claim. Okay. A legal claim is one that's based on a law. So just like jurisdiction, the legislature has passed a statute that says that this statute applies to certain people under certain circumstances. Let's take traffic, for instance. The, the legislature passed the traffic law and says this law applies to all those who use the public roads and how it's here is how it's to be enforced. So the legal claim that the cop and the prosecutor is making is, is that there is a law that the legislature has written that says it applies to you. And that's all a cop, a uh, prosecutor, or a judge has to know. Is that is there a law on the books and did the legislature pass it to say that it applies to certain people and do you meet that certain people's status? That's all they're saying. I should have should have explained that. So you have person subject matter jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction, and then you have in rem jurisdiction. For our purposes, we're just focusing on personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. And the court has to have both. It may have subject matter jurisdiction, but if there isn't a case of controversy before the court, to, okay, then there's no jurisdiction. It's the whole doctrine of standing. Wrong. Yeah, you're wrong in trying to bring the doctrine of standing into an offense or a, a criminal offense, uh, a violation of a law. That standing only applies to civil lawsuits where one person is suing another person, then you have to have certain standing. Uh, but this is what Stevens tells his people, and they actually believe it, and he's totally wrong. This is where he tries to mix apples and oranges. He tries to, to throw in a civil procedure to a traffic ticket, and it doesn't work that way. Th that stuff does not work that way. You have to have standing to complain. Well, if you want to say, if you want to go that route, you can actually, in a broad sense, say that we, the people, have standing to have our laws enforced. It's, it's really that simple. But, you know, standing is for civil, not criminal. And the foundation of the case is the legal claim the legal opinion that if I'm standing here in Gilbert, Arizona, physically in Arizona, then somehow their written instrument called Constitution, the law, somehow, they can't explain it, but somehow it applies. Well, uh, Mark, they've explained, you've, you've had it explained to you innumerable times by judges, by uh, attorneys, by prosecutors. Uh, this attorney here, I've told you that a bazillion times, but you just don't grasp it. You just don't get it. And so these people, I mean, you, you said it yourself that the legislature passed the law for jurisdiction. Same thing uh, with anything else. They pass a law and people have to follow that law. It's been explained to you. And I'm going to, there's, here's two instances right here where a, a low-level bureaucrat explains it to you and a, the Supreme Court Justice of Arizona gives you facts of how it works. So let's see if you can comprehend. So I'm asking you, if, you, if you're going to go and, and take my property uh, by force like that, uh, how is that different than stealing from me? Well, because we have the legal authority to do so. Oh, you have the legal I mean, authority. The, what is, and it's, but, yeah. So you would have to have evidence that the constitutional laws apply to me. Right, right. But now, without the evidence, we evident operate based on the Washington State statutes that the legislature has completely spelled out what we are okay. supposed to be doing here. Okay, and that's what we do. Boom, Stevens, did you get it? The legislature passes laws outlining what they are supposed to do. You got a problem with this stuff, Stevens? You got to go to the legislature. You got to take political action. You can't take legal action.
It doesn't work that way. You have to take political action and either get rid of the people that are in there that pass the law or lobby them or get a bunch of people together and lobby them and get them to change the law. I mean, they've been doing it with marijuana throughout the country. So that's how it works. You have to go. You can't you that you couldn't go to the courts and say, Judge, I, this this uh, marijuana law just I don't believe it and I don't agree with it. That doesn't work that way. You had to go to the legislature and get them to pass another law. That's how it works. Now let's see what the uh, Supreme Court justice says to you. Sure of uh, of the government that, that you are a part of and I know that all governments and I've had this confirmed by the Attorney General and other judges and prosecutors that the argument is that if I am physically in Arizona then the Constitution and laws of the government of Arizona apply to me and you as the government would have jurisdiction over me my question for you is do you have any actual facts that would actually prove that that argument's true <laughs> um, that's funny <laughs> I'm not sure I understand the question, and I'm not sure that your proposition of what the legal principle is as is, is correct. And of course, it's not correct. But let's go ahead. <laughs> because I just I'm not sure I heard you correctly. If you're asking, is it in fact true that if you're physically in Arizona, you're subject to the laws of this state? I, th I think that's right. Yes, and my question to you is that that's your argument, and that's what prosecutors and police officers are throwing peaceful people in prison for every day. If cops go out on the street, they see you, they feel, oh, he's physically here, our laws apply, we're going to go and investigate. My question for you is, do you have any actual proof, any empirical evidence, facts, to support that argument? Yes, because people who are physically here and violate our laws are, in fact, prosecuted and incarcerated. Uh, well, that's what Bill Montgomery said. That's called uh, an argument. Well, let me finish. That's called an argumentum ad baculum. That's not support for your argument. Just because you're physically well, you willing... me if I had facts to support the argument. So an argument ad factuum is quite appropriate. <laughs> Boom! Again. Stevens thought he was going to be smart <laughs> and, and make this... Uh, argument that baculum fallacy uh, claim against it, but uh, Stevens doesn't use that uh, fallacy incorrectly, and he's using it incorrectly here, but the, ju the judge just went right back at him and said, okay, well, I'm giving you an argument ad factum. You wanted facts? I gave them to you. <laughs> and gives the court jurisdiction over me. Now... And to me, the, again, the basis of that, I'm not just pulling it out of thin air. Yeah, you are. You're kind of pulling it out of your ass, but you're not understanding what a, uh, a legal claim is. I'm taking a legal claim that's made against me by a police officer and or a prosecutor. But the, the, but again, we started by talking about whether or not uh, there was error and confirming personal jurisdiction, you keep saying, where's the evidence right. uh, that this Constitution applies to me just because I'm standing here, you say. Right. Uh, and that's fine, but that's a, almost a political position, not a legal position to take inside the courtroom. Boom. Did you hear that, Stevens? He said it right to your face, that what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring a political issue into the court, and it just doesn't work that way. You're still as dumb as ever. You're still handling out the same ignorant, wrong bullshit. And I'm, I'll be here every time you do. Have a good one, Stevens.